how can some people out there want to gratuitously harm some of our yes. country's wildlife? Uh, here's Miranda with a story of how one brave walker turned prosecution witness in a wildlife crime. For hundreds of years, badger baiting, where people set dogs on badgers for entertainment, was one of Britain's most gruesome blood sports. But despite being outlawed, badger baiting is still going on today. This is the story of an artist who stumbled across this medieval sport and then risked his life to bring the badger baiters to justice. For 25 years, wildlife painter Robert Fuller has been finding inspiration for his work by taking photos of his subjects. In January 2011, he was doing this with a friend along the River Derwent in Yorkshire when the normally serene sounds of running water and birdsong were interrupted. I could hear a lot of dogs barking, you know, very anxious dogs out here on a peaceful Sunday afternoon. It was quite an unusual event. But as we got closer, uh, I could hear uh, a badger squealing and chittering and wailing. It became quite obvious that something was definitely wrong there. The two men wanted to investigate where the commotion was coming from. From behind some branches, Robert could just make out what was going on. I could see these uh, uh, bull lurchers. There was two of them attacking a badger, and uh, there was a group of men watching around the outside, and then there was several other dogs, lurchers, uh, terriers. I called to my friend straight away to ring the police, and as I ran back through, I grabbed my camera out of the rucksack, which I had with me. Robert started taking photographs to document what was happening just 70 yards in front of him. At points, he could clearly see the legs of the badger being flung around by the dogs. Robert was potentially putting himself in harm's way as the men were carrying shotguns. He must have been incredibly scared. Yeah, it was, uh, you know, quite a tense moment. Robert collected as much evidence as possible, and he even managed to capture the moment of the badger's death, with the smoke from the shotgun still hanging in the air. This was also the instant when he knew he had to get out of there. It appeared one man had spotted him. Robert beat a hasty retreat, holding his phone close to his chest to avoid raising further suspicion. He gave the 999 operator their exact location. 15 minutes later, the police arrived. The men were still close by and all were arrested. This was the first step in getting a conviction, but it would take the expertise of the RSPCA to bring the men to justice. A lot of the time, we don't have the evidence there to be able to convict and to catch. In 2011, we had 192 incidents of badger digging and baiting reported to the RSPCA, of which so far seven of those have resulted in prosecutions going to court. But this case would turn out to have no lack of incriminating evidence. Along with Robert Fuller's photos, the police found part of a locator collar carried by the men. A tool of modern badger baiters, they're put around a terrier's neck before it's sent down a set. When the dog finds a badger, the men then use the locator to dig both of them up. Once out, the larger dogs are released on the badger. It would be easy to think that this case was closed, but to get a definite conviction, the team needed proof the badgers had been killed. They had to find the bodies. We managed to find the first one with the aid of a, actually a police sniffer dog that found one badger dead in a marshy area that had been ripped to bits and shot. And a second dead badger was found when they dug down into the set. This was the conclusive proof the officers needed. In January 2012, Paul Tyndall, Alan Alexander, William Anderson and Richard Simpson were each jailed for 16 weeks. Two other men, Christopher Holmes and Malcolm Warner, were given 12 weeks suspended sentences. And a teenager who stood on the sidelines was placed in a youth rehabilitation programme. And none of this would have been possible without Robert's bravery in taking the photos in the first place. Every year, it's thought that thousands of badgers are tortured and killed by badger baiters in the UK. But as the public become more aware of this gruesome and horrific crime, hopefully it will become consigned to the history books.
hopefully. Mm. Now, Miranda Robert showed incredible bravery there. Yeah, I mean, he was a total hero to do what he did. I mean, yeah. he's actually got an award from the RSPCA to acknowledge his bravery. Mm. Uh, here he is uh, receiving it. We just need more people like him yeah. out there. Yeah. So what can you do then if you do... Um, see or witness a wildlife crime? Well, you need to do exactly what he did. He did the right thing. He rung 999 because he was actually there at the scene of this, the crime. Obviously, if you're not there, you see something and you want to report it later on, you yes. can go to your local police station or you can go directly to your RSPCA office because they have power to prosecute as well. Yeah, well, I mean, of course, you cannot condone killing like that. Absolutely barbaric. No. But, you know, there are those out there who believe that badgers spread TB. I mean, we've covered the item many times on Country File. Yet yeah. the proposed call in England, that, that was postponed, wasn't it? Back in That's right. There was a big U-turn. When the government announced the call in September last year, then there was a big U-turn in October, and yeah. they've decided to postpone it until at least the summer this year. That's just in England. Mm -hmm. uh, in Scotland, there aren't any cases of TB, so that's not an issue. Um, in Wales, the Welsh Assembly have decided to go down the vaccination route, and in Northern Ireland, they're looking at a, an eradication programme combining vaccination with a possible call. So, yeah. at least yeah. in England, badgers are safe <coughs> until the summer. But this one has summer, to remember, yeah. with the farm this is their livelihood. Mm. It Absolutely. isn't enough to just have one's eyes welling with tears. This stuff is horrible, and as long as it ends, oh, that's great. Yeah. But the fact is, if there is a TB risk, you know, we have to take it seriously, like grown-ups. We do, mm. but I just think more research needs to be done on it. And the bottom line is that science says that um, even if you, you do have a cull, it's not necessarily going to risk, going to reduce the risk of TB. I think more work needs to be done on it, more money needs to be spent on it, and more research needs to be done before they announce something yeah. like that. It will be a trial call when it, when it goes ahead as well. Yeah. So we'll see. Very controversial. Very issue. controversial. I mean, there's so many sides to this. You can go on mm. and on and on and on about it. But, uh, but there has... Yeah, yeah I mean, sorry, you know. No, I was going to say that, you know, in, in general, there has been an increase, hasn't there, in, in wildlife crime? Wildlife crimes are on the increase. A lot of the, these crimes, you look at them and you think that was something that happened hundreds of years ago, mm. but things like badger baiting are still going on, hare and deer coursing, and there's a, a, a blood sport. as well. Absolutely. I did a piece recently on cock fighting. Yeah. Um, um, and there's a blood sport called lamping, which is very popular in the winter months and these long, dark nights where people go out with very powerful lights and lurcher-style dogs and they basically try and bring down badgers and foxes and deer. Mm. There's no financial gain in this, it's just a sport and this sort of thing is on the increase. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And saying that, potentially, though, there's some bad news for the Wildlife Crime Unit, isn't there? Well, the other bad news today is, if there wasn't enough, is that the National Wildlife Crime Unit are at risk of losing their funding in March this year. This is a unit of uh, it's a very small number of incredibly dedicated people, people who committed to uh, eradicating rhino horn theft and trade and trade of reptiles and persecution of birds of prey. And, uh, it, I mean, they may lose this funding in March this year if the yeah. Home Office don't decide to renew it. I mean, there's been a lot of cuts, cuts in um, police funding and they're just one of the yeah. people who may suffer. Well, we'll see. So, well, we'll see what happens. Yeah. Miranda, thank you ever so much.